Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. There is a young Cuban heavyweight called Daniel Perro, uh, based in Miami, Florida. He's 25 years old, six foot five, um, and they're kind of grooming him to be, you know, one of the leading lights in the the next generation of heavyweights. When you consider that, you know, the age of Usyk, Fury, AJ, and so on, they're closer to retirement than perhaps we realise. You know, or put it this way, they're closer to to their decline, dipping beneath world level. So you're going to need people to come through. Um, and we have, you know, Daniel Dubois, who's the IBF champion, 27 years old, clearly in his prime. You've got people like Moses Atalma coming up. Um, and, you know, Jared Anderson's still young. I know he got, he got beaten up and stopped by Bacoli, but he's still, if he wants to fight on, he's still got a future. But Daniel Perro may well end up fitting into that new generation of heavyweights. I think the jury is still out, but he has shown quite a bit, quite, you know, quite a lot. He's got good skills, good technique, as you would expect from a, a Cuban from that background. Um, like I say, he's you know, orthodox, he was orthodox fighter, but he does he can fight, like a lot of these Cubans, he does fight, twitch hit and fight, um, he's ambidextrous. Big lad, 6'5", 25 years of age, hasn't fought anyone yet. Um, he was on the Jake Paul's uh, Most Valuable Promotions, I think it's called. They did a sort of prospects gig. Um, and he was on the undercard. And he fought a guy called Walter Burns. And Perro blew this guy away. Now, Walter Burns, eight eight wins with six KOs, two defeats, or three now, actually. Um both the defeats were by stoppage. He, he got stopped in three by Joey Dueco. He actually quit on his stool, I think. Um, prior to that, he retired um, also after the third round against a guy called Michael uh, Piriton. So the guy, and it, you know, 42 years of age, what do you say? I mean, the bloke is, he's five foot 11. He looks like a dumpy looking guy. He just comes out swinging huge hooks. He was never going to beat Perra. Um, and Daniel Perro just toyed with him. For, I think it was a southpaw stance, and he fired a, a huge uh, backhand. So it's a left hand that landed on um, Walter Burns's jaw, sent him backwards, flying into the bottom rope, wide-eyed. I mean, Burns was like, whoa, what the hell was that? He managed to get up, and he had a really bad cut over his right eye. It looked like the, like a... I don't know, some sort of um, vein had burst or something, and, and he was blinking profusely. He carried on fighting. Um, Perro did, was just beating the hell out of him. Um, Perro scored a second knockdown. Actually, prior to that, the doctor had a look at Burns and this you know, bad injury that he had, and it was obvious Burns couldn't really see out of the eye, but the doctor let it carry on. Perro continued sort of beating the guy up, um, and then it was weird because it was really strange because um, Burns got clipped and sort of fell. It was a second knock. He fell sideways almost, as, but he was still trying to fire punches. Do you know what I mean? It was very chaotic, a very chaotic brief, but brief fight. Uh, and down goes uh, down goes Burns again. He gets up. The referee has a look at him and puts him out of his misery. Um, Quite rightly, and I think I think Burns had just said enough. I think he was like, oh, the hell with this, you know. Um, he did. He was distressed. The eye was giving him trouble. I don't think he ever really recovered from that first knockdown. So you could argue that it was a, a decent win against a kind of a poor opponent for Perro, but he's got to step up now. He's got to step up. Um, I know he's only had ten fights. He's got eight, eight by KO. Um, if you look at his record. Prior to that, he hasn't fought anyone at all. So you look at Perro and you think, okay, he's got the, the dimensions, he's got the size to be one of these new, the new generation of heavyweights. Um, what, he, what he obviously needs is more schooling. What he needs is more rounds. He needs people who are going to, number one, not go anywhere when they're hit. Number two, fire back, you know, give him something to think about. And most importantly of all, number three, to give Perro a chance to use the skills that he seems to have to to show the things that he's working on in the gym. 
you know, like a lot of these Cubans, he's based in Miami, Florida. We've seen in the past that some of the Cubans that come over, they get a taste for the, you know, the high life, I suppose, the freedom, you know, the sun and everything. And they don't really live the life. Now, Perro doesn't seem to be one of those. He seems to be someone who is disciplined. He looked in good shape. But he's going to need people who take him round. He's going to need people who are going to, you know, give him something to think about. That's the only way you learn because he's fought absolutely no one. And by beating up people like the Walter Burns um, of the world, he's not going to he's not going to learn and he's not going to be able to show his skills. He's not going to be able to hone his skills and he certainly won't get anywhere near world class. So even though the raw materials are there, I think that Daniel Perro is a long way off, you know, being classed as, as world class or, or challenging for a fight. Uh, to, for a heavyweight for a heavyweight title fight, I think he's a long, long way off that. The raw materials are there, but the jury is, to be honest with you, still out. Um, but we do need, you know, we do need heavyweights to come through. It, it's true that the older generation are, you know, walking off into the sunset, which is fine. You know, they've they've done their bit. AJ Fury, Usyk, you know, all of them have had great careers. Usyk's a cast iron Hall of Famer. Um, Fury and AJ have had very, very good careers, made a shit ton of money and won world titles on more than one occasion. But you need the next generation to come along. And the only way that you can do that is by giving them good opponents so they're learning. That's what Perro needs, in my opinion. You know. But I have to say this, you know, this Jake Paul show that was on this most valuable promotions thing. Yeah, I mean, I, it was, they had some good fights on it. And you know, I'm, I'm, even though I hated the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson farce, I thought it was an absolute shit show. Nevertheless, some of the things that Jake Paul does with MVP are very, very positive for boxing. Um, very positive, especially women's boxing as well. He does a lot for women's boxing. I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. So, you know, everyone is open to criticism. Everyone is open to praise that that's the only way you, if you're an objective person, that's the only way you can do things. So I think I give Jake Paul credit for, for, for this show. Um, but anyway, what did you think? What do you think of Perro? Daniel Perro? I, I, yeah. It needs a lot of work, a lot of work. He needs what he needs essentially is a lot of it, a lot more experience, a lot more rounds under his belt but you can see just from little clips against these poor opponents that he's got so much more to give, but you won't get a chance to give it unless you're in with good opponents, you see. But anyway, thank you for watching this video, as always. Uh, please leave your comments below if you've got any. I'd like to know what your opinion on Perro is. Um, and again, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and if you could subscribe to the channel if you knew, that'd be fantastic too because you helped the channel out. And yeah... Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As always, much love. Bye for now.